Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting a short training course on unsteady heat conduction equation. So far, we have talked about the physical significance of this particular equation. We talked about the analytical solution and in relation to the analytical solution, we talked about Fourier series, orthogonality and other related stuff. In this particular video, we will initiate the discussion on numerical solution. Numerical solutions are very robust and useful in engineering and applied science applications because there are many equations which are not solvable analytically but we can actually solve it numerically and this is very easy to solve because of the advent of many computational techniques and high level computing methodologies. Today we will be focusing on explicit method for the solution of this numerical solution of this particular equation and we will show the solution with Microsoft Excel so that we can understand every bit of the calculation. It will give the visualization for the solution and will be, it will be easier to proceed with other methodologies. So without any further delay, let me talk about the content of this particular video. Here we are going to talk about the numerical methodology. We will obviously show you the problem statement along with the boundary conditions and the initial conditions because this is the heart of the story. And then we will talk about grid generation which is very important with, with respect to the numerical solution. And we will also talk some understanding about the solution methodology. And ultimately we will solve it using MS Excel so we can understand every bit of the calculations. So before we start, let us pay homage to Professor Scientist Fourier because he is the person who invented this methodology of analytical solution basically and later on numerical solution came. Today we will be talking about the numerical solution. So this is the equation we are going to solve here and we have talked many times that this particular equation has a first order time derivative and the second order space derivative and we are confining uh, confining ourselves in one dimension because of the simplicity because this is the initial level of training and then we'll talk about the complex three dimensional problem so this particular problem is given graphically so we have a rod here through this rod the heat will be flowing and what are the external conditions and initial conditions? Let us try to understand it physically. So at the left corner, which is also given by x equal to 0, the temperature will be maintained every time at 100. I have not taken any unit for the simplicity, say 100 degrees Celsius. So at this point, at any time, the temperature will be 100. So at initial time, the temperature is 100 and maybe after 10 seconds, 20 seconds, temperature will always remain as 100 degree. So this is one of the boundary conditions because at this boundary we have the temperature 100. Now let us talk about the initial condition. Initially, the entire rod except x equal to 0 will be kept at 0 temperature. So this is the initial condition because we are defining the situation at time equal to 0 for all x except x equal to 0. Now, as you know, this particular equation has second order space derivative. So, there should be two boundary conditions necessary to define the physical com problem completely. So, this is one of the boundary conditions. So, we need another boundary condition and this is the boundary condition where we have maintained a constant flux at the right corner of this particular rod. So at the right corner means x equal to L here and at x equal to L we have the gradient of temperature equal to 0. So we will be exploring this boundary and initial conditions in order to solve the temperature profile along this rod. So temperature profile means we look for temperature at different points on the rod and those temperature will be solve for different time steps. That means if you consider any point on the rod, say this particular point, so temperature will keep changing with respect to time. So we need information about space and time and that is why this particular 
uh, problem can be resolved into two dimensions. Two dimensions means one is coming for the space and the other is coming for the time. Suppose we have divided this particular rod into some portions by some grids. So those are the grids. The entire rod here that has been divided into you can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So there are 8 divisions in the spatial direction and this y axis it repre represents time marching that means as we proceed with time we have different grids and along those grids we basically solve for the temperature so let me clarify it a bit more suppose what's happening i want to look at this point say so this point is x4 so initially the temperature here is x4 which is zero and that we know from the initial condition now what is happening we are gradually proceeding in the time direction so i come here so this is the point where we will be talking about the temperature at t equal to 1 and the location will be x4 so if you move another step then you will be knowing the information that is the temperature information at t equal to t2 Similarly, as you proceed, you will be stepping ahead with the time direction and your temperature will change. So, this thing will happen for every point. Suppose you want to know the temperature at x, x7 uh, that is here and you proceed in the time direction. So, the temperature will change with respect to time. And we are, we are to solve the temperature at those grid points. Those are called grid points. So, will be solving this particular equation and in order to solve a particular equation numerically we have to discretize the differential coefficient so in this particular video i will not talk about the discretization methodology however i will make another video where i will be talking about this discretization method that is the finite difference method but you already you might have been aware of this particular discretization method and that's why for this video i have skipped the discussion however you know this is the forward difference that is with respect to time we are taking a forward difference that is forward time difference so why it is called forward because the differential coefficient will be defined as uh, the temperature for any space x at t plus delta t condition minus temperature at x comma t position suppose let us try to explain here say so this is point this is a point whose temperature is given by t x comma t so this particular one will be the this per, this particular red point will be this t x comma t plus delta s t that is elevated time step now this particular one is t x t so difference between these two divided by the delta t where delta t is the difference between two grid along y direction so this gives you the first order time derivative similarly for the space derivative we have taken a central difference central difference means in space we have suppose this is the point of consideration and in order to calculate the space derivative second order space derivative we need temperature information at x plus delta x position and also temperature information at x minus delta x so with respect to this the previous point and the next point so if you look at this particular differential coefficient you have t x plus delta x comma t minus 2 t x comma t plus t x minus delta x t so this particular thing will give the temperature information of this point so if you want to know the temperature at x comma t plus delta t you need the information about this three and that is why this is called forward time backward space if uh, sorry central space this is the forward time central space because we are proceeding in the forward time direction and for space we are taking the central difference so we'll come to this now at the right edge we have this zero flux condition that is the gradient of temperature is zero 
for this we take the central difference and this central difference is only valid along this line because this is coming from the boundary condition this is not the basic equation this is coming from, from the boundary condition and the boundary condition is only valid at the boundary so remember this condition is only valid along this line all the points along this line line so we discretize this thing uh, by central space different uh, finite difference method so this is t at l plus delta x comma t where what is l l is nothing but the distance in the horizontal direction so this particular point is l i mean so l plus delta x comma t minus t l minus delta x comma t so any point suppose we are considering this particular point so in order to calculate this del t del x we need information of this which is nothing but this previous point and we need an information which is showing the next to this but there is no nothing next to this so this is this point is kind of ghost point because we don't have existence of this point in this solution space so how to tackle this in order to tackle this we apply the boundary condition so this differential coefficient is zero so if we put zero here this particular thing will become equal to this particular thing which is nothing but t at l plus delta x comma t will be equal to uh, t at l minus delta x comma t that means the temperature at this ghost point will be equal to the temperature at this point so we don't need to worry about this ghost point because as this is equal to this point so we can work we can go ahead considering the temperature of t l plus delta x comma t is equal to t at l minus delta x comma t so this particular equation is only valid along this boundary so we along this boundary what will be this second order differential coefficient so for that what we do we replace this t x plus delta x by t l minus delta x and after rearranging we get the information of second order space derivative and this is only valid along this particular edge so what we need to understand is when we are solving for this interior points we should be using this coefficient and while we are solving along this edge we should be using this particular differential coefficient information so in the next slide i have explained this in detail so now we have information for the first time derivative and the second space derivative so we replace we substitute this into this original heat conduction equation so as you can see we have substituted these things from this and this equation and we are getting this now what we do we rearrange this particular thing to get the information about this point that is t x comma t plus delta t so we keep it in the left hand side and all other things we rearrange and keep it in the right hand side so in the right hand side we have t x comma t plus this coefficient so where delta t is this particular one there is a difference between two points along y axis and delta x square where delta x is this one and t into alpha uh, into alpha where alpha is the thermal diffusivity so all the things are constant here if we just calculate this will come as a constant and we will be assuming this constant as k and then t x plus delta x comma t minus 2 t x comma t plus t x minus delta x comma t so now let us focus on this particular picture so what we are going to calculate we are going to calculate temperature at an elevated time step that is the red line so we want to calculate this temperature in order to calculate this we need information of three points at a lower time step which is t so if we know this three points temperature of these three points we will be able to calculate this and the same thing i have shown earlier i want to calculate this temperature and for that i need information about this three temperature so this is valid for any point suppose i want to calculate temperature here for that i should know the temperature of these three points 
So you consider any other point, suppose this one. For that we need information about this, this and this. And that is why the scheme is given like this and this schematic is very important when we are solving for this FTCS. This is called FTCS because forward time central space. We have taken the forward time coefficient and the central space and that is why this is forward time central space. Now one important thing I wanted to show here is we need to solve for the interior points. Interior points mean those points. You want to have the temperature here, 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 here. So those points are interior points and for the interior points you have this particular equation. Now if you want to calculate temperature at the edge as in the edge we have a particular condition that is the zero flux condition. So the equation will be little bit different and we have already talked about it in the previous slide here and here we have just demarcating that whenever you want to solve for those points you use this particular equation. Now we'll go to Excel and we'll try to formulate this problem and try to calculate the temperature at different grid points. So we have an Excel file open here. So what I have done is I have taken this particular picture because uh, you can actually visualize that we are trying to calculate temperature at the interior points and we want to use this particular formula which the formula we have already showed in the presentation slide. So this top formula is for the interior points for the calculation of the interior points and this particular formula is for the calculation of temperature along this edge. Now let us proceed with whatever shown in the yellow diagram. So we have nine points along this line. So it, it, it starts from zero up to eight. So there are nine points and eight divisions and in the time direction we have eight points and seven division. So we can go ahead with this convention. So this is basically along x direction. So this direction. So let us also take say this one is your x0. Let me just write it. Say x1, this is x2, x3 x4. I can increase the number of points but initially I am showing up to x8 whatever it is shown there. Okay. Say up to this I want to calculate. Let us remove this and in the time direction also I want to calculate up to say t0. Initially let us obey this particular form then I will increase the number of grids. So T2, T3, T4, you see I can drag it I guess. Yeah up to T7 is there. Okay. So those t I have take given some numerical value say t equal to 0 then 0 0.001, 0 0.002 up to 0 0.007. So we want to calculate the temperature in those grid points. Now let us put the boundary condition. So what were the boundary condition? Those were the boundary condition at x equal to 0 and time equal to 0 the temperature was 100. And for all other points, it was zero. If you look at the bottom line, you can actually compare. See, all those were at zero temperature. So I have taken zero temperature. And along this line at x equal to zero for any time, the temperature was 100 everywhere. So what we do? We drag it. We keep temperature 100. Now, Along this line, we have a special boundary condition. So we keep, keep some color for this line. And those are the interior points. And this interior point, we keep some other color. 
say we give some color so this color is very deep let me choose yeah this one so we'll be solving for this particular interior points so let me make some border yeah those are the interior points and those are the right edge where we have this flux condition so initially we are solving for this many grids and then we'll expand this and we'll solve for more time so for this particular one so now let us look at this particular point if we want to calculate the temperature at this point we need information of temperature along at this this and this if you visualize the diagram which i have shown so for calculating temperature here we should know the temperature at here here and here if you look at the temperature at these three points are known here the temperature is 100 here it is zero again it is zero so we have information of this three so we can actually calculate temperature here then what about this point once we come here then we we have information along these three points so again we can calculate the point here similarly all the points along this line can be calculated now once all the points are calculated now I, now I reach here so again in order to calculate the temperature here I need information of this this and this three points so information at these three points are known so you can calculate this and thereby we will be keep doing and we will reach for I will re, I will actually complete calculation for each grid points now let us do it what is the formula Be, uh, before calc before using the formula we have to calculate this coefficient this coefficient is nothing but delta t alpha by delta x square so what is my delta x if you see I have taken delta x equal to 0 0.1 because delta x is nothing but difference between these two so 0 0.1 minus 0 0.0 which is 0 0.1 and the difference between two time step is delta t so here delta t is again 0 0.001 so what I have done is I have calculated this so I can again calculate for you so k is nothing but this coefficient and this coefficient is your delta t this is your delta t by no delta t into alpha so alpha I have taken as 1 for the time being so let me put it inside a bracket for better understanding so by what by delta x square so this is delta x to the power 2 so if we enter so we get this 0 0.1 so k is 0 0.1 now come here so if I want to calculate temperature here I need information at this point this point and this point we have those three points so this temperature is equal to follow this particular formula txt so my txt is this point then you need to put a plus sign then this temperature i mean this coefficient k and this k is constant for all the i mean all the grid points and that's why we'll take it as a constant for taking it constant you should put dollar symbol before and after the letter b and if you do it it will fix the value then what we have then we have a multiplication and inside a parenthesis what we should put we should put this information t at x plus delta x so the, if this is x the next one will be at x plus delta x so we have put then minus 2 into t at xt so t at xt means this particular temperature plus t at x minus delta t x minus delta x so this is the previous point so this point so this formula is done I I press enter and it will calculate 
one minute uh, this is d9 your d9 is 0 plus uh, something went wrong okay both the things become d9 uh, t uh, this last one will not be d9 it will be your c9 this temperature yeah that was the mistake if i click enter so it will calculate this point now if you drag the formula is already chosen if we drag it will calculate for the other temperature also if we drag bottom below it will calculate for all the points now let me after i calculate and let me calculate for this edge first then i will come to it so along this edge the temperature is txt that is this particular temperature plus k again k means this one so again we put dollar symbol to make it constant yeah that i have done multiplied then parenthesis inside the parenthesis what we have we have i mean in a 2 into inside the parenthesis we have T L minus X that means this temperature this particular temperature and T X T minus T X T means this particular temperature so then what I do, I drag it. So I get information. Yeah, I get information about all other points. So now what if I do so up to this temperature is calculated. Now we can proceed for higher temp higher time steps. So if we just drag it. Similarly, so we will get temperature information for higher time step. Now this particular one we can actually drag and we can see we get temperature information. So we can drag you can drag as much as you can in the time direction. But not in the space direction because in the space direction we have fixed this edge. So in the space direction we cannot proceed further. But in the time direction we can proceed. And let me plot temperature at a particular location say x5. How the temperature is varying with time. So let me plot it. You can see. You can visualize what is happening initially the temperature was zero and then gradually the temperature is increasing and the temperature should increase for all the points and with a varying magnitude so if we try to plot i mean all the lines if it is possible uh, let me check whether it is possible in a surface plot or some other representation let me check yeah it is possible so you can see the temperatures are growing like this gradually so at all the points the temperature will rise so this is the temp this is the maximum temperature rise and this is this particular line and the next one would be this point x3 so you can see as i am clicking on so as you move away the temperature uh, will die down and this is what it is happening so here we have shown how exactly you can calculate now if you have any confusion with the drag because i have calculated at a single grid and then we have dragged because in excel there is a formula if we have similarity we can drag but you can check actually if you take any arbitrary say this particular location let us look at the formula so we are calculating 
temperature temperature at this location so we should know temperature at the uh, bottom uh, lower time step that means this three temperature should be required so let me check the formula so this um, particular cell is your g you can see g19 so 90 g19 so for g19 you are having g18 so this temperature yeah this is required and you know this and this also required and h18 so your h18 is this particular temperature h18 and your f18 mean the previous temperature here so you if you look at this three temperature is there in this particular one so you check any anywhere suppose this one for this one if you see this is h24 so for that you need this one that is h23 l23 and your g23 see this is h23 you have l23 you have g23 you have h23 so all the points we have the same equation for the interior points and for the exterior uh, for the edge we have a different equation which is given by this one so this is how we actually solve for temperature profile now one point is why we call it explicit method this is called explicit method because in every cell we are explicitly calculating the temperature because we don't uh, we have information about the other points so we are able to calculate temperature gradually one by one from the information of temperature at the other points so we don't have any problem explicitly uniquely you can solve for every cell and that's why this is called an explicit method and one more thing i should talk about which i have missed that is there is some thing about this coefficient there is some important thing about this coefficient this particular coefficient should always be less than 0.5 in order to have the stability so this ftcs is not stable everywhere if this coefficient this constant is less than 0.5 then only you can use this one otherwise this is not usable so this is the stability criterion so as we progress with this particular course we will be talking about the stability also so those this particular course will be helpful to you but in the next lecture i will be talking about how we can code in python or matlab so i'll prefer to use python because nowadays people use python more so we'll try to code this particular thing the knowledge which we have gained from this excel file we'll be using this knowledge to implement a code in python i mean the idea is from this knowledge if we implement the code then you can also visualize the code what is happening in the background of the code because once the complexity increases and if you don't have the transparent knowledge then the code becomes difficult to comprehend and the idea of this particular course is to understand all the things step by step manner so we have a clear cut information so I hope this particular series is being helpful to you. If it is so, please subscribe to us to motivate us for making more videos. So I stop here. Thank you.